Oh, welcome. You're watching Vision Plus. I'm Bonnie Libhart, and Emily had something to do. I'm not even sure. She called Chuck, and so she said, I must have a sermon, so I guess the Lord gave me a sermon. <laughs> and you know what I've been thinking about? How do we make God fresh every morning? We've been talking about how to find your God-given gifts and what to do with them. And I have an acronym for you. An acronym, that big word means you take the letters of something you want to remember and you use those letters to make it uh, you trigger in your mind so you can remember that. And so we're going to use God-given gifts so that we can make uh, find out what he wants us to do with our life. I think if we could possibly talk about this every day of our life, and I know that he wants us to seek him first, seek you first, the kingdom of heaven, all these things, and uh, then those things shall be added unto us. You know, he knows what, he, what we need, only even better than that, he knows what we want. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He changes our wanter. Well, in making the G of our God-given gifts is, God becoming fresh every morning. And you know, I think so much about if we're finding out where we are, what we're supposed to be in God, that I really feel like He wants us to do what flows out naturally. What is it that would, when you get up in the morning, you'd be so excited about doing it? I think that's where God will put our ministry is uh, where and our life's work, our vocation and our avocation, is what do you get really enthusiastic about? And you just jump up and down to obey God. And that O is obeying God because He wants us to obey Him. But when we do that, and it's something we want to do, then He can make us want to do it. I think that when we just totally release ourselves to Him, then we want to obey Him. We want to do what He wants us to do. I know when you're first married, you have a wonderful love for each other. Maybe when you were a single person, uh, you would maybe hate to get up and fix the, your meal or uh, maybe wash the dishes, clean the house, do the laundry. But when you get married and... You want to keep the house beautifully clean for your husband. You want to fix the meals the best that you can and get yourself all pretty and smelling good when he's around. Well, I think that is the way it is when we want to obey God. It's not because he's pointing his finger out. You better do what I say to do. No, it's because we want to obey him. We have a real desire to do what he wants to do. And then the D is we're daughters of discipline. Are, if we could be men too, but uh, we are disciplined to have death to ourself. Uh, that uh, when we want to do God's will, then it's no longer something that we want to do ourselves necessarily, but we want to do it through Him. We want to do what He wants us to do. So we discipline ourselves. Now, discipline takes a lot of forms. Our bodies, the temple of the Holy Spirit, so we discipline ourselves not to eat too much, not to do all the the no-no-nos, the smoking, drinking, uh, doing drugs, all those things. Keep our temple holy unto Him. But it's discipline of exercise, too. I have to force myself to exercise. I have this believer-sized tape. And sometimes, uh, if Vicki and Chuck will allow me to, I'd like to do some, show you some simple exercises. Because if I could encourage you to exercise 10 minutes a day, three or four times a week, then that would be quite a bit of time that we could keep our body in line. 15 minutes, they say you should really get your heart pumping 15 minutes a day to get the blood pumping through your veins so that you can keep your cholesterol washed out of your uh, all of your veins so you don't have a heart attack. You don't. I was talking to a doctor this past weekend that was looking at our house and, and I said, is there really a, the cholesterol, we're hearing so much about cholesterol, is it really true that it can cause heart attacks and you can die from it? He said, absolutely. And I said, well, what about 
we're going through this eat oat brand two muffins a day eat fiber carrots and uh, all the foods we're supposed to eat and he said well that's good common sense to eat a balanced meal and but he said one of the best things for you is really exercise where you get fresh oxygen inside of you that that is part of keeping our body the temple of the Holy Spirit the discipline that we go through and then of course the that's God and the given that G I say I think is the grace you know about grace being if you've ever gone to uh, maybe a, a seminar where they teach you about the that blind spot that each one of us have there's a blind spot where I know what to do and then there's an area where I don't really see my own faults Tony and I've been married 31 years and I don't know about you but I know that he can see my faults and my mistakes and the things I do that bug him his pet peeves he wish I wouldn't do so much easier than I can and I can see his a lot easier I can see my children's my children can see mine and I give anything if I didn't have those those blind spots in my life that space where here I am I come up to a point here where I'm I think I do terrific and then there's here's where I would like to be where God wants me to be and there's this long space it's like a map from when we went a couple weeks ago from here to San Francisco there's a long period of time when you don't see any trees you don't see much of anything as you're going through Texas and on through uh, Oklahoma and into New Mexico and even as you go up through Nevada and parts of the western part of California and on into San Francisco there's a lot of areas where there's not a lot to see and I think that that's where I am there's a lot of my of me I don't see and I wish I had more green grass and flowers growing in that area of my life that but it's just dry desert area I know one person said about the Mojave forest and they said no it's not the Mojave forest the Mojave desert I said yeah I know I went out and cleaned the forest it used to be okay the eye it's so the grace is that that part that God makes up from where we are to where we want to do see okay is a word I want to quit saying so often so every time I hear myself saying that I want to cut that out and not say it anymore the I is our identity and it lasts for eternity second Corinthians 5 21 let me just go through that real quickly for he hath made him who knew no sin that's Jesus to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him isn't that exciting I think that is so exciting to know that Jesus became sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him and then Psalms 100 if you're taking notes you might just hop right over to Psalms uh, 100 you didn't know we don't ever think about now okay right before Psalms after 99 Psalms 100 in verse 3 for we know that the Lord he is God it is he who hath made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture isn't that exciting I think that is so exciting we are his people and the sheep of his pasture then all of the verses it talks about victory of course you hear them from time to time here on Victory Network but the V of God given gifts the V is the victory you know he said that he wants us I, I think of it as perfume that you, did you ever open a bottle of perfume or have you ever heaven forbid broken a bottle of perfume and that whole fragrance just permeates not only if you spill some on you it'll be on you but it, it permeates to all of the areas in the room in the rooms next to it and I think that's a way that Christ works in our 
in us, in the Holy Spirit. You can feel it when some people walk into your room, into your, your presence. You know, you know when you've met another person that has the Holy Spirit within them. Uh, this morning I was taking a couple of people from California around to show, you, show them some houses. And you just, you knew it when you got in the car that they were people who knew the Lord Jesus Christ. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit and they loved Him so much. And it's such a joy that we in our everyday walk of life come across those wonderful people that their presence, the Holy Spirit through them just permeates the car, the room, their whole being, the area where they are. Don't we love being in their presence? They're people who have victory, victory over their circumstances. Now, you know that we in our family, if you watch the program from time to time, Vision Plus, getting a vision for your life, that this victory that we have in Christ Jesus is in spite of family challenges. So, I've been through uh, my husband that I was married to when I was 16 years old, had a baby by another woman while he was married to me. And so we know that we can allow those circumstances to get us down, or we can move forward on them. And Tony and I have been married 31 years. There's a lot of things that he's done that I would like to have him, uh, you know, thrown in jail, thrown under the jail. And I'm sure there's a lot of things I've done he'd like to do the same thing to us. But in spite of that, our families, our mother and daddies aren't what we'd like to do. My mother's 86 years old. She is a wonderful person. But she wrote me a letter the other day. I had taken this three-week speaking tour around the United States. Well, primarily the West Coast, San Francisco, San Jose, San Bernardino, Sacramento, uh, San Alamitas, and San Diego. Well, Los Alamitas. Sorry about that. Had so many S words. Thought they were all S words. And then over to Phoenix and up. My mother heard from my aunt that I was flying around or going around the country speaking she said she wrote me a letter she always keeps me in line she said well now don't become a big shot and I wrote her back and I said well the big shot I'm getting bigger by all the food I <laughs> eat when I'm traveling and I am shot from the trip meaning I am totally exhausted so, but she keeps me in line she keeps me down to normal and won't let me be a big shot how I'd love to be but I can't be because my mom won't let me but our mothers and our children condition us to uh oh lost an earring if you don't mind I don't mind I'll just put it right back on again uh, that's not as bad as the day I was doing a television program doing the news live newscast I used to in commercial television work in news and I was doing this newscast and this had these long Tammy Baker eyelashes I call them and the air conditioning went out and it was a very hot August day and the perspiration started running down in my eyes and the eyelash started flip-flopping up and down. I said, I looked right into the camera and I said, if this is bothering you as much as it is me, I'm going to take it off. I took it off and later I was speaking at Christ for the Nation and a guy came up to me. I remember you. I saw you on television. I'm ready to whip out my pen giving my autograph. He said, yeah, I saw you the day you lost your eyelashes. We think we're doing such wonderful things in life and they remember when we lose our eyelashes. You'll remember when I lost my wooden earring. Well, I don't wear them very often, so I guess I can lose one occasionally. We want to have victory in spite of all of these things that happen in our life. Our family, including husband, mother and daddy, children. Pro all three of my children have experimented with drugs. They're all off of drugs now. And Emily, as a missionary, goes to Russia. You know about those things if you watch the program from time to time. So. Our son is just doing incredibly well. He is just, it's just so exciting to see him grow in the Lord after what has happened in the last. Our daughter is just, uh, the, you, you just are going to have to hear her testimony one of these days. But that's for her to tell you. But it's just exciting to see them growing in the Lord. Oh, how wonderful it is. So it's a victory in the area of our husband, our children, our parents, and our mental, social, physical, see it's not just one area, our finances, 
So we had a lot of financial, financial reversals in this last uh, 18 months. Incredible financial reversal. But God is uh, making it the year of Jubilee for us, and we're able to start out again. You know, the freshness of a new day is so exciting because... The slate is wiped clean of all the other days that we've been, that we've had. And now we have that marvelous, wonderful new day. This new hour, this new decade, this new 21st century that's coming. So it doesn't make any difference what happened yesterday, but it's only what are we doing today and tomorrow and all of our tomorrows. There is nothing you could probably mention that I haven't personally sinned doing or me or one of my family members or someone I know that I've had an influence on. But does that matter to God? Only if we continue doing it. But otherwise we have victory in every area of our life. Let's say that we didn't graduate from high school, we didn't graduate from college, we just, we'd just we love to know more, uh, we are on welfare. It doesn't make any difference. We can start in the mental area of our life. There's now you can take get your GED, you can take College of the Air. There's wonderful ways we can learn to read and write. My mother, who's 86, helps people to learn to read and write. She was a school teacher many years ago, and so she's still using her ability to, to do that. And you know the, the last letter of given, our God-given gift. Well, it, the E is enthusiasm. Let me go over again. G for God is fresh every morning. O for obey Him. D is the discipline and death to ourselves. And G is for grace. I for identi our identity last. V is for victory. And E is for enthusiasm. To have enthuso is God within us. The enthusiasm for ourselves and for our lives. For our circumstances that is, as it is. Paul said I can be happy poor. I can be happy rich. I've been both. And it Contentment in who we are right now can be happy married, can be happy unmarried, can be happy with a job, without a job, whatever the situation is. Just learn to be content with it. So if we're content and we do the best we can with what we have and where we are now, God will give us more. And then the last of given is the end. You know what that is? God has shown me. Do it now. Now. You know what Satan wants us to do? He wants us to procrastinate. He, he wants us to... Uh, I've heard it expressed, you par perhaps too, is that disobedience is obedience, but done in the future, not now, but later. And so what we want to do is do it now. Go forth with the goal that God has given for us, and then what we been planted in our mind that we should do and do it now go for it go for it now I was writing uh, to my daughter and writing on our book the book I'm working on the God given gift and God has shown me do a little bit of it every day now the last part of this is gifts and the first G is God's strength you know it's okay if we grow up if we grow up in God, that means, it says in the Bible, when I was a child, I acted like a child, did childish things, played with childish toys. Now that I'm grown, I do mature things, grown-up things. I take responsibility for who I am, where I'm going. I am committed to do something. Commitment is probably one of the most wonderful attributes we can have is when we make a decision and commit to do it. You see it in Chuck and Vicki with Victory Network. They are committed to do what God has shown them to do. And that's what we can do is get committed to what God wants us to do. I know when I started reading the New Testament on cassette tape for Emily when she was in college at Christ for the Nation and then now for my grandchildren that I committed to do that, but God showed me that maybe I could do the Old Testament too, but I was afraid to tell anyone I was going to start it in case I failed. You know, you hate 
for someone to say, oh, I told you you couldn't do it. But I started on Genesis with that hot tea and lemon and was able to complete that project by my sweet husband and son doing their own cooking and uh, cleaning and everything at the time, gave me the time that I could do it. And the I is for the I am's and the I can's. And I jotted down some of the I am's um, that we can do through Jesus Christ. And as another thing that, um, let me, let me just start. I hate to look off camera, but I'm going to do this for just a moment. There's a lot of hooks that the enemy uses. And so that we can, we know that through Jesus, I am worthy. Through Jesus, you are worthy. Now, the hooks the enemies use is that I only count or I am only worthy. I am only accessible when. Now, when are those times? When I'm perfect when I avoid conflict, when I'm noticed, get attention, when I please others. See, Satan would like for us to believe that we're only worthy when we measure up to others' expectations. But God says that you were not born into this world to live up to my expectations. And I was not born into this world to live up to your expectations or to the loved ones around us. We're only born into this world to live up to the Lord Jesus Christ expectations of what he's planted in our mind for us to do that doesn't mean that if someone that you have to take food to every person in your church if you go to a church of two three thousand people that doesn't mean you have to go visit everyone in the hospital but it does mean that when God lays it upon your heart to go take food or to go visit someone in the hospital then it's up to you to carry that through we don't perform because someone else thinks we should perform taking food, taking flowers, uh, going to visit the sick. Those things are only required of us when God wants us to perform them. And we, can, we don't have to produce to pre prove to other people we're producing for show to man. But we produce when God plants it on our heart and puts it in our heart. And we uh, want to feel another's pain. I know it all. I feel good. I'm thin. I can do penance. I look pure. I can serve. I can do it on my own. See, that's the way Satan would like for us to feel, is that we can do it on our own and that we must earn love. And I tell you what, when we are doing the I am's and I can's because Satan wants us to just won't cut it. It's only when it's the ones that we're doing through Christ Jesus. And that's the I of gifts. The F is to be first in the kingdom. Seek, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You know, all. Does that leave anything out? Out? No, he talks. He says he knows we need food and shelter and clothing, that even the lilies of the valley have those things, and that Solomon in all his beauty, all of his wealth was not clothed like one of these. He knows we know, need those things. It's not that we have to sweat over that all the time. And then the flowing naturally of the things that God's put in our heart, so many times people don't want to sell out to the Lord because they're afraid they're not going to have any fun anymore. They're going to have to go to Africa or some Antarctica and talk to the penguins. They are not, they're afraid that God will make them do something that's not inside of them. Uh-uh. He wants us to flow naturally with the gifts that he's given us. These gifts didn't come from Satan. They came from God. God gives us all good things. And the the, the T is to turn, to turn again to Him, to turn again, to turn to Him for the first time if necessary, to take off our mask, to be transparent, to let other people see us. I learned a new word, and I'm going to give you that new word, self-revelatory. You know, when in Revelations, Revelations is revealing 
how the Lord wa wanted us to see what's going to happen in the future, we could become transparent or self-revelatory. Let people see that we're human. Hey, we, we've had financial problems. We've had marital problems. We've had children problems. We've had drug drinking. You, you name it, we've had it. You, you, if you have those challenges, it's all right to let other people know that you have, that you know what will happen? Satan won't have any more strongholds. You know how people gossip about you sometimes? They gossip, they get a little inkling. Oh, have you heard? Bonnie's children did this. Bonnie's husband did that. And on and on and on. But those are strongholds that Satan would like to have over us. And he can't use that on us anymore. Because the Spirit helps us when we seek God first. And that S, the strongholds, they're gone. That's the S of the God-given gifts. When we seek God first, the Spirit will help us with our infirmities. Infirmities, yes, infirmities are the sickness, the challenges of physical, mental, social, financial. It's all of it. And then salvation. That's the greatest S there is, is salvation. So that we live through eternity with Him. But not just someday, honey, but today. We live with Him today and all of tomorrow, all of our tomorrows. So God-given gifts, how to find your God-given gifts? Someday I hope you will able, be able to get the book and learn all of it. But the G for being God's freshness every morning. Start the day out fresh and obey Him. Death to self will we discipline ourselves in all of the areas of our life with our... Uh, food, face, fitness, facts, fancies, everything is totally turned over to Him. And through grace, the identity lasting through eternity, victory, our enthusiasm, do it now, God's strength through God's strength, the I can through Christ, be first in the kingdom, take off our mask, and the stronghold's gone in salvation. And then you will be a person that has God-given gifts, and you will know what to do with them. If you have more questions, be sure and call me, Bonnie Libhart, 461-8148, or 539-3337. And uh, sorry, Emily couldn't be here today, but I'm glad you were here. I'm Bonnie Libhart, and bless your heart for watching Vision Plus, your own Victory Network. <laughs> Thanksgiving in your heart and give it praise. Give it praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving.